We are back at it again today. I had a request to try this horizontally. Um, so let me know if this works well for you or if it's better the other direction uh, if you're watching this and uh, have an opinion. So I'll try it this way. I'm going to turn you around and we're getting ready. Hi! Getting ready to start. I had to say hi to my neighbor. I see Debbie is watching. Does this look okay this direction, Debbie? Before we get started, we're gonna start walking. Unless I hear otherwise, we're gonna keep it this direction. So we are, where are we? At the corner of Creek Road. And um, I'm embarrassed to admit, I don't even know the name of the road. So we're like drive maybe? Like I said, in one of my earlier ones, when I was growing up, they were just streets with houses as our, our uh, identifying marker. So um, I don't always know what they've named all the streets. So go down here, one of my favorite little boat houses, and we'll have to check out this. This is, uh, traditionally it was known as Mary, uh, Fanny Pearl McWilliams' home. And this is one of my favorite shots right through there. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful old house. Looks like they're doing some restoration on there. I'm assuming it got some water in there. Um, but Fanny Pearl McWilliams was married to Stanley Wayhab, and Stanley Wayhab has the big Wayhab house. A lot of people get married just to the left of um, the anchorage. And Stanley was her husband. I've got a ghost story that goes along with that that was told to us by the family. I'm not going to go into that here, but perhaps sometime we can tell the story. I'll show you the houses and a view of the harbor, different side. It's very, very calm today, very warm. I went to the beach this morning and um, took my jacket, but it was really, really warm out, so I ended up leaving it. And just so you guys know, I can not see, for some reason, it's not showing me any comments on here today. It's just... Sometimes they come up, sometimes they don't. So I apologize if I'm not going to answer anybody's questions. It's because I don't see them. I'll try to check the comments when I get home and uh, answer it there. So we're going to try to go all the way around to there. And then I'm going to take you on a... It's actually a private path. So please don't uh, go exploring. Um, and the only reason I'm doing the private path this time is because... Nobody is here renting the houses that it's in between. Um, so I'll tell you when we're getting ready to go down there. But we like to respect our neighbor's privacy, but every now and again, if nobody's here, I, I do sometimes sneak, sneak down that path. So we've got BB's cottage. They were able to raise the house before the storm came. And this house, oh, this is one of the favorite houses on the island. It's still a very, very traditional inside. They have not changed it inside at all. It was at the, on the Historic Homes tour a few years ago. And I don't know if y'all hear that. Uh, I'm going to turn you around. You hear that noise back there? Can you see the Osprey? The big <coughs> um, double propellered helicopter is doing practices here on the island. They like to land. Good afternoon. Uh, they like to land and take off and practice. So if you hear rumbling in the background. It is that. It's a little harder this way uh, horizontally to hold it steady, so I apologize if you're bouncing around a little bit. So there used to be a little house here uh, that was taken down. It was just on a little tiny piece of property. Apparently it was built there uh, to establish property ownership is the story that I was told. There was a dispute between landowners and uh, the person who owned it decided to build a building right on the property line to establish her ownership. We're actually going to take a couple little 
side trips on this walk. I hope it doesn't end up being too, too long, but, um, we'll, we'll see. So if you run around this side of the island, you get some gorgeous sunsets if you're on the sun side. They've got a few condos. We're going to walk past the condos in a little bit. Horizon condos, and then I'm not sure the name of the others, just to the left of that. And a few so little houses down in there. There's some you can rent right on the harbor. And this is going to be our little side trip in a minute. I was talking earlier in one of the videos about Robbie's Way. And this is Robbie's Way. This is a little path owned by the Preservation Society. And it is public access to the sound side. There is no parking. So bike rides uh, or walks are good to get there. Um, but you, there's no real parking there. But you can get somebody to drop you off with a kayak or something and get in the water that direction. So up here was where Sam Jones lived. He would stable his horse, Ike D. Somewhere up around here, there was a lot less vegetation. Uh, this little house, the um, Kugler Cottage, if you look at old Ogrecoke pictures of this side of the island, you'll see absolutely no trees, just sand and the Kugler Cottage. And that is it. And it's really grown up a lot since then. Kugler Cottage, I can't remember exactly when it was built. Imagine at least 20s, if not earlier than that. But honestly, it might even have a plaque on the door. I'm not really sure. And this was the house of Robbie and Charles Runyon. Back in there again. Didn't have any vegetation around at first. And Robbie Runyon is who Robbie's Way is named after. They wanted to make sure that there was always public access to the sound. Very, very sweet folks. She used to walk up and down the lifeguard beach every single day, uh, even when her arthritis got really bad and her husband was so dedicated and would take her up there and do their walk. And this area right here used to be, it's still privately owned. It used to be uh, used publicly, um, but there was some issues with people not taking care of it and they have closed it off to public use. Um, you can still stand here and see a pretty sunset from there or watch the sailboat go by, but that is public or uh, private land now. It is not for public use anymore. Going down, I don't get to this side of the island very much. Uh, Monroe keeps a lot of his hauling supplies over here. Down this little path, uh, you can't see it, and I'm not gonna walk all the way down there, is the little house that looks like you're gonna run into on the ferry when the Cedar Island or Swan Quarter Ferry backs up out of the dock. And it was one of the old um, Navy houses that they moved over there. And honestly, I don't know if they floated it over there or if they hauled it around. I assume they floated it because that would probably be the easier way to get it over. And again, I like to answer questions when they're coming, but none of the questions are showing up if there are any. Um, so I apologize if I'm not responding. I will look when I get back and see. So this is the other side. You guys probably recognize this from views uh, around by the community square or there's a the little house way over there in the Coast Guard station and now the NCAT building. So really calm today. There were white caps out on the sun. And if anybody saw the um, post, somebody asked about the Amtrak coming through and years ago there was a brochure that Amtrak printed that had people, it was a real brochure, had people sitting in their view liner and in the seat of the view liner, they were looking out the window and they saw the Ocracoke lighthouse in the background. And my dad came down here and determined that 
that right around where we just were must have been right about where the Amtrak came through um, and we all got a good giggle about that so you can check that out he read it an article on April Fool's Day about Amtrak coming to Ogrecook and the article was a joke but the brochure from Amtrak was actually really honest to God printed and uh, you can imagine that we we enjoyed that for months we thought that was one of the best things that year so we've got a little graveyard up here I told you we've got over 80 cemeteries on the island they're tucked in everywhere this is actually pretty high ground over here because when they dredge the harbor out this is one of the spots that got extra sand so it's higher and if it's a hurricane coming along or something or, or tides coming up sometimes people will park up here to try to be protected although you can see the lines of uh, wood alongside where people are trying not to let you park on a regular basis there so again we, we tend to park here only when a big storm's coming and then um, we try to do it try to do it respectfully oh, there goes the osprey in front of us i don't know if y'all can see that today. I had big plans to get lots done and I got the back porch cleaned off. But it was something that made me feel good. So we're going to tuck in here and just hop right down to Robbie's way. So you can see what it looks like and kind of get an idea of where it is. It's just past Tuttle's Lane, just past, if you're coming up the hill, just past the turn to the Horizon Condos. I'll go here, it's the sign Robbie's Way. We've been working on getting another sign. Mm, and those flowers, they smell incredible today. I assume that's what it is. It's only a very narrow path. Got homes on either side and looks like it's been cleaned up a little bit just as long as you stay on this side of the palms It's a little work. Tide's pretty low right now, it looks like. But you can see, you can see Portsmouth Island from here. Boats, not as many boats as sometimes are, but a few boats out there. You can watch the sunset, you can watch the ferries come in. The dockway over there is the um, Park Service, or not the Park Service, the NCAT building there. I wish I could see if anybody had questions. I hope some of you get to use this the next time you're in town. Mm, back through the wonderful smelling flowers, blooms. Oh. We were hiding from Philip. I don't know if you saw him go by. 
gonna give him a holler. He's out for his afternoon bike ride. Hey, Dad! They can't hear me from here. But you can see Philip if you want to say, him, say hello. And so this is the entrance to the Horizon Condos. And there we have a kitty cat beating for us. Let's see what we're doing. It's probably feral, probably run, but um, Gail takes care of the kitty cats back here, so we'll probably pass a few more. We'll come around. Pretty little flowers. If anybody knows what kind of flowers those are, I'd love to know those purple ones. They're beautiful. Ah, Southwind is the name of the other um, condo unit. Got some rental houses back in here. It's a private drive, so really the only people that come down here are um, folks who are renting or who live back here. And the place we're gonna ultimately go to is called the Hurricane House. And some of you have probably seen, um, if you go on the Cedar Island or Swan Quarter Ferry, there's a little old house. It's a really pretty picture of it. Um, it sits right in front of the lighthouse. And that is the Hurricane House. And it's called that because they marked the tide lines of storms over the years and uh, sometimes you also hear it called the 44 storm house that looks like somebody might back, be back here doing some work to it it has been raised up it's the building all the way back there it has been raised up um, and i'm not sure if it got flood water in it this time or not but it definitely has over the years the museum preservation museum had a exhibit up years ago with pictures of, of where they'd marked it inside the house. Ah, he caught me. I called to you. Hello, Coming to check on the hurricane house. Got a little access. If you rent back here, there's a little access to the um, sound. And got a great view of Portsmouth from here. And now this is the private path that we're going to go on. So don't do this on your own, but I'll give you a little sneak peek of it. It's got a really cool view of the lighthouse. And this house and the house we're going to come out at um, are owned by the Ronthalers. They... Um, Alice and Theodore Ronthaler were very uh, beloved on the island and did a lot for the school. And we did on our YouTube video, we did a little story about them at their grave site. And their family still owns it. And I'm particularly partial to the Ronthaler house because that's where I got married. And I love the oak tree under it. If nobody's there, we'll take you for a walk under the oak tree. But... Isn't this gorgeous back here? Beautiful view. So these houses are down Live Oak Lane. So if you go past the lighthouse and turn right, you'll come to those houses. There's some you can rent down there too. And uh, just the marsh grass. And here's the Round Dollar House back there. Um, the marsh grass and the lighthouse and on a beautiful clear day like this, it's just really spectacular. And these are wax myrtle bushes. They are um, used to the smell partly. And also when you break off a, a branch of them, they can kind of act like a horse's tail. And there it goes. So you've got the osprey and the lighthouse and the marsh grasses and old ochre cocoons. Yes. 
so the wax myrtle gives a scent that the mosquitoes don't like and they um, you swish it around you help get rid of them so they got a lot of damage here they got water in there and in here and uh, back here is where Joe Bell is buried um, and if you see the flowers they're actually Gallardia um, but their nickname on Ocracook is the Joe Bell and his gravesite is somewhere back in here I'm not gonna go it looks like they're doing some work I don't want to interrupt them but it's a rental house it's a traditional old Ocracoke rental house no heat no air conditioning um, very rustic but incredible little house And back here was where Clinton Gaskell lived. Clinton used to carve birds. If anybody used to come to the island, you'd see him sitting out by the porch or by the road and he'd be carving his pelicans or uh, that's what I think of him as carving little geese, whatnot. Um, and he would stick them in cork and sell them. And this house, beautiful little house. They're doing a lot of renovations on it too. This was the old Ocracoke Library. This was sitting right next to the school um, and Miss Maggie Boos ran it and they got rid of the library and gave it to, or sold it, I'm not sure, to someone. But back there was where um, Clinton lived. Um, yeah, but the folks that live here homeschooled their girls and so they used the little library as their homeschool. And they used the lighthouse because they could see the lighthouse from there as the nightlight. They said when the nightlight came on, it was time for bed. Or when the lighthouse came on, it was time for bed. And they couldn't get up until the lighthouse went back off. So that's kind of a cool thing to have right in your backyard. Here we are coming back out. Sarah Ellen Drive or Lane, Sarah Ellen Lane. And uh, Miss Sarah Ellen was Clinton's mother and uh, the whole school went down to wish her happy birthday when she turned 100. That was a big event. That was years ago as well. And here we are back out to the harbor. Still got some docks over there that need some work. Um, but it's a beautiful day. And thank you guys for going on a walk with me again. I'll try to look in the comments and answer any questions that might have been or um, try to explain anything if somebody didn't understand something. But. We wish you could be here, but when the time's right, it'll all come together, I suppose. All right, thanks for watching.